What's going on, Colts Nation? We are back with Believe in Colts. I'm Lawrence Owen. With me, as usual, is my boy, Gerard Powers. Yes, What's sir. going on, man? How was your weekend? Weekend was good, man. Kind of flew by. I had a lot going on. My uh, baby sister got married, so uh, I wasn't able to keep up with much news this weekend with just being busy with wedding stuff. But, you know, had a fun time. You know, weddings are always fun. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I, uh, had a wedding with my niece uh, just a couple months ago, so yeah, I, I get it. Yeah, it was that's always great. Uh, glad glad you had an enjoyable weekend. Then at least you know get away from from the normality of life. Right. You know what I mean. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a lot to go over this week, definitely, uh, especially today. Some news drop, and we will get to that in just one moment but it is that time of year as college basketball takes center stage with the tournament finally upon us if you're looking to wager this year bet online is the number one spot for all your updated odds and info along with great contests including the bracket contest where you have a chance to take home the top prize head over to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50 percent welcome bonus on your first deposit just use promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, to get started. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering needs, including a live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games. Bet Online, where the game starts. So, interesting signing this morning, JP. We get a former head coach to go along as a senior defensive assistant what's your thoughts on the john fox signing i like it man uh you know i'm a big believer in you can't have too too much knowledge too much experience in a room and i just think that's what he brings to the table you know he's been a part of a bunch of successful teams uh some successful defenses you know he he's seen it all when it's come to his career and things that you know he can bring to the table uh, so just to add that experience and knowledge to the to the group, man, uh, you know, I'm excited about it. it just means there's going to be more ideas and, you know, uh, more communication on, on on different ways and angles. You can attack this thing going forward as far as with the defense, another brilliant mind. And uh, as a player, you got to You just got to think now, you know, we're going to be way more than prepared, you know, on defense with all this experience that we have in the, in the room. So uh, I'm excited about it, man. I, I like it as a fan. Yeah, I do too. As long, like I said, you know, you you broke it down brilliantly on exactly what it brings to the team. The you know, because Fox is a little bit different. He likes to bring pressure. He likes to bring that extra guy or two. You know, occasionally, especially when he was you know uh, over with the Panthers and the Bears and, and stuff like that. So uh, I do like it because that 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 gives you different eyes on the situation. But at the same time. You know, I brought up a point before we got started here. There's that whole cooks in the kitchen thing, you know, and it it, it worries me a little bit because all these guys, we now have three guys. Now, obviously, Frank Wright ain't going to be touching the defensive side of play calling. If he does, then there's a problem and something needs to change. Uh, but you got two guys who have been former head coaches now on the defense, which on paper looks fan freaking tastic but you talk about they have different ideas and different ways of doing things could that cause a problem and like maybe uh you know uh like differences of, of, of opinion on what should be called uh would obviously since he's a senior assistant fox would still have to you know maybe give his opinion but then defer because obviously he's not the dc yeah, that and that's exactly how it's going to go. And like I said, I, I think it's going to, you know, happen more so in just helping. It's not necessarily going to be John Fox coming in and trying to say, you know, this is the right way to do it and the way you guys are thinking is wrong. It's not going to be one of those type situations uh, because I'm pretty sure during this whole process of them even hiring him, you know, there was already discussions on about how it's going to take place, what, what your actual role going to be. Uh, going forward and this is a business and people are professionals and everybody know when it comes to business and professionals you just have your job to do and I think he's going to have a specific role a spe 
specific job within the defense that, you know, these are his responsibilities and we want his ideas and his take on these specific uh, responsibilities. And that's going to be it. It's not going to be more so of, you know, John Fox trying to come in and tell Gus what he needs to do or what not to do. Because like I said, all of these guys have more than enough experience and more than qualified, you know, to do these jobs. So now it's about everybody just doing whatever their role is within the the, the machine itself. And that's the organization. So what exactly you talk about fresh eyes. Um, did you ever, uh, obviously, most likely you had, uh, uh, do you have any experience with John Fogg? I'm not saying personally but you know playing against his teams is there anything that you saw from his defenses that you like that 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 possibly they might be implemented with this team I mean just everywhere he's been he's just known to bring pressure and 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 kind of have different ways of going about it you know he's he's one of those guys that that tries to get the quarterback to guess wrong you know uh disguising things of that nature uh that that I mean you think about when he was with Chicago and uh, you know, what they was known for during that time. It was their defense and how well their defense was playing. So he's just another guy that's just going to add that dimension of uh, flexibility when it comes to, you know, maybe possibly using Kenny Moore in, in some different ways and styles that maybe he did with, you know, some nickels that was similar to, you know, just whatever the, that that his expertise is or his experiences in, a, in the past that kind of resembles this coach's defense. That's what he's going to add, a little bit of flavor uh, to what we already have on that side of the ball. So the Colts ended up signing another coach, um, which was completely unexpected. And yet what a lot of fans are expecting has yet to happen. Not only has yet to happen, but throughout this entire offseason process through, you know, the end of season to uh, the pressers at draft days and, and interviews and stuff, Chris Ballard and Frank Wright have been incredibly bullish about uh, how much they believe in the current uh, skill positions of, for the Indianapolis Colts, talking, you know, specifically talking about the wide receiver group. A lot of fans uh, want Chris Ballard to go out and grab another wide receiver. Um, that's out there on the market on free agency market, but he Frank Wright just came out today and discussed about how they're not going to just go get somebody because of a name, you know, um, that, and that drew a lot of backlash that I'm seeing, um, out there on social media right now talking about, you have to get weapons, right? Uh, for Matt Ryan, uh, or, uh, otherwise you're wasting him. That's that's basically what they're out there saying. I want to. I'm curious. I'm not so sure he's actually saying that they're not going after actual free agents at the wide receiver position. I think he's most likely saying we're not just going to go grab a name and throw out a bunch of money to somebody to overpay for someone that may not fit what we're looking to do. Uh, I, I'm not, I, I, I don't see it like that way, but it does sound like he does like the wide receiver position. What, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, just hearing him speak. I remember a couple pods ago, we were talking about how they spoke out against Carson Wentz and it was, it, it made it clear as day what the plan was going forward. It wasn't any more speculation. You knew they were getting ready to move on because of that. I think it's another situation where they're speaking out to let fans know that, you know, they like what they have in that room and only way that they're going to add to it is if it comes in and it fits. And I think when you think about some of the wide receivers that are still out there, I know everybody was, you know, talking about the Julio marriage and how he, him and Matt Ryan can maybe rekindle some things or whatever the case may be. Like, yeah, but everybody also know that Julio is not just about jump and sign right away. I think you got some time when it comes to the veteran market of uh good receivers that still left so of course you want to do your due di diligence and then when you look at the draft and you look at that wide receiver room in the draft it's a lot of good young wide receivers in this upcoming draft and then when you think about the wide receivers of today's game they're coming in and they're ready to go I mean you look at the Justin Jeffersons the Jamar Chases and uh 
you know, the DK Metcalf and AJ Brown, like you look at those guys and, and receivers are ready to go now. So who's to say that you can't draft, you know, that, that, that one guy, you know, in that first round or second round, and he's not going to come in and, and, and be ready to go because you have some pieces in the wide, res wide receiver room, like Michael Pittman and, uh, uh, Parrish, you know, and, uh, the guys in the room. So you, you like, if you like the room that you have now, and you like the wide receiver group that's that's in the draft, yeah, you're going to do your due diligence before you just start grabbing a name or whatever the case may be because it's some talent out there. And like I said, the young guys are coming in ready to go right away. And uh, I know I'm yapping a bit, but and Reggie Wayne to that wide receiver room as a coach, whatever that group right now might be lacking in, maybe that was the real reason why they felt like they needed Reggie back this year, because if it's mentality, Reggie's going to fix it. If it's a little bit of route running, Reggie's going to fix it. So if you like that wide receiver room, and then you look at the wide receiver coach and what he's going to add to them already. So you already got a vision on what they're going to look like going forward this year. You know, maybe, maybe it's going to be more than enough weapons to, to, to fit Matt Ryan and uh, the system that that's about to be in place with him and coach Wright. Well, I mean, like we said, we have yet to really see we, – we've seen a little bit from Paris Campbell, but obviously, you know, his injuries uh, have kept him off the field for the majority of his three years. Um, if he could stay healthy, I have full faith that I think Paris Campbell would be a, a fantastic uh, receiver. But there's a lot of guys on the team that, you know, haven't really had that big chance. You know, your Ash Tadula and your Des Patmans and guys like that. So – you know, I, Ballard and Reich seem pretty bullish on 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 the talent that they have right there, and, and I'm okay with it. it if they honestly believe that. If they believe that the upgrade at quarterback makes that wide receiver room that much better, you know that's that is a real thing. You know, um, you just got done talking about Reggie Wayne uh, being the the coach and. I want to. I would like you, if you don't mind, to go back in time a little bit in your head and try to remember a little bit about practices, you know, against <laughs> Reggie and, and what it was like trying to defend him in practices. First of all, I just want like Reggie is one of my best friends. Like I said, just was talking to him last night. So um, he is an asshole when it comes to. You know how it can be. He still sends me one on one clips from practice, <laughs> you know, and things like that. Like, he still critiques himself to this day when it comes to the game. Like, he's still one of those guys that's a perfectionist. So, um, I remember my first training camp. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a third round draft pick. You know, I'm going to a team. You got Marlon Jackson, you got Tim Jennings, you got mm -hmm. Kelvin Hayton. You know, you got a, a good group that's been there a while. And, uh, you know, I'm able to go through training camp, make a couple of plays because it was always ones going against the threes or the fours or whatever the case. So those were my reps. All of my reps came against the best of the best as a rookie. And I remember making a couple of plays on Reggie and, uh, and Peyton, my, my first training camp. And Reggie, like before I can even walk off the field and practice, him and Peyton was already asking me, what did I see? Uh, what gave this route away, you know, what what was the flaw in the execution from my perspective? And that was the first time I ever had that happen to me. And going forward, Reggie was just always was like a big brother to me. So all, every practice, every rep, one-on-ones, everything, whenever he beat me, he's telling me like what he saw in my technique or what he saw and what I did. And then when I make plays, he's getting that same feedback. So he's going to be a perfectionist when it comes to that 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 wide receiver room. He's not going to accept any type of excuses, you know, when it comes to players not being able to execute. You're talking about a guy that nobody considered was really the fastest, a guy that everybody was questioning at one point, could he take over the throne for Marvin Harrison and be the true number one? Like you had a guy that – uh you know, everybody thought that he was just a product of Peyton's success. And then a rookie quarterback comes in and he has one of his best seasons, you know, ever. So you got a guy that's going to prove a lot of people that he's more than capable of, of making a wide receiver room look a certain type of way or play a certain type of style. Again, never saw Reggie miss practice ever, you know, in my four years there, like never missed a meeting, always on time, 
always first one in, last one out. So he's going to bring a certain level of professionalism, I guess, from his perspective to that room. And when you look at that room and the young guys that still almost have a, like a clean slate, still kind of raw when it comes to being a professional, he's going to be the, the, the reason that you're going to see the growth and some of these young players and, and these young guys like Matt Ryan bringing to the table. It's not like you're dealing with a rookie quarterback or a young quarterback. Matt Ryan is going to be talking the same le- language as Reggie. You know, they competed versus each other. Uh, they competed versus each other in their prom of their careers. So that's what I mean by far as what these guys are going to bring to the locker room and, and bring to these players. It's a certain style or a certain way to go about your business. And when you're young, you're soaking everything up right now. Like that, like anything these leaders tell you when you're a young player, you're soaking it up because you don't know, you know, you don't know the business side. You don't know the the true meaning of, of staying healthy and doing whatever you got to take. It's all about your growth. And I think that's what going to make the difference far as, who we got at quarterback right now and who we got in that wide receiver room as far as the 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 growth of some young players that's kind of soaking everything in. Is that a common thing when uh between offensive and defensive players when they're matching up against each other to to ask each other, you know, hey, you know, how do I make myself better? How how you know, this is what I think you could do to make yourself better? Yeah, especially when you're on the same team. Sometimes you might have some relationships with uh some opponents, but you're not giving each other any feedback until it's like off season type stuff to where, you know, and you're not even, you know, being honest with yourself then, because again, they're (laughs) they're the ops. So we Mm -hmm. say, um, but when you're on the same team, I think if you ask any great wide receiver, any great DB or uh, anybody that played, you're definitely trying to help each other out because the ultimate goal is to win. And then once the season starts, that's the team. There's no more, somebody being jealous of the next guy because he's getting wrecked. Like once the team is set, you got to play whatever role you is to help that team win. Like there's no more competition, you know, if that makes sense, you know, like the whole competing stuff went all the way up until week one. Now it's more about trying to keep guys healthy. And, you know, if you're not doing your job, you'll get fired just like any other job. So the next guy's ready. So uh, I think I think the great ones do that a lot. You hear Deion Sanders and Jerry Rice talk about their one on one matchups and the conversations that they used to have. And, you know, uh, I think if you just go back to any type of great wide receiver, whoever that DB was uh, on that team that they faced a lot, they definitely was trying to help each other out. Well, it's kind of interesting you talk about, you know, it seemed like kind of a a mental flip between training camp preseason, hitting to that, you know, final 53 cut and then going to the regular season, you know, being a competition, you know, you got to earn your roster spot, right? Right. Uh, Last training camp, you know, uh, it was was well known, you know, Carson Wentz and um, uh, Quentin Nelson had foot foot surgeries right right off the bat right and they were sidelined for basically all training camp and preseason and I would sit there and watch while the offensive line were doing drills and Quentin Nelson would just walk out there after each every one and sit there and talk to these young offensive linemen you know coaching them showing them what you know technique issues and stuff and I think that that's a benefit when you have somebody who is already established, you know, he's, he's got his roster spot. That's fine. Right. That's, that's, he he can go out and do that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, For sure. like somebody like Quinn Nelson, listen, big fella, if you don't feel like practicing today, you ain't got to practice today. We just need (laughs) you ready for Sunday. Some people have that, right? Like the white friendly was, wasn't the type of guy that was going to practice every single day. Like we knew we needed Dwight Freeney on Sunday, but some people it's just in their routine that they got to go through every single thing or they don't feel like they're completely prepared for, you know, that that ultimate game or whatever the case may be. So like somebody like Quinn Nelson also, though, on the flip side, he don't have to go out there and coach those guys that he's Mm-mm. doing that off of the nature of he's just a great guy that right to help out these young players or whatnot. But there's some pros out there that no, they're not, they're not about to do that because they look, and it's not wrong because they're more so looking at it like I'm teaching this young guy how to take my spot, essentially. Like I'm giving this young guy my jewels and what I do 
and all that type of stuff all that type of stuff when in the back of your head you know it it's a numbers game and you know if it's a young guy that's just as good as you and you're an older vet that's making all this money and they think this young guy can give the same production as this older guy that you're they're going to kick you out the door first thing just because it's a you know the it's a bottom line when it comes to the money and organization so for quinn to do that and most coaches do that like when i was there like the older guys didn't have to accept me in like they did knowing that i was there competing they drafted me which at the time third round was considered a high pick um you know you get drafted third round db and tim jennings like was one of the first guys that be like nah come over here watch film with me you know he's in his third year haven't really established himself yet marlon jackson's already established and he's taking me out to dinner and all this type of stuff before i even you know step on a field just to try to make me feel comfortable so the coach are known for having those type of players that just want to help uh help and see the next guy succeed and win and that's why the coats have always had a good rap when it come from a well-ran organization yeah locker room situation I mean, the colts are known league-wide for their their locker room especially now but um you know during your time as well right uh, the, yeah. the locker room is, is, a, is a big deal i think that is a i think that has a major factor in the mike mitchell hire right uh he came in as a veteran uh obviously his position was kind of on the fence you know on 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 being a starter because of his age and how long he's been and they were trying to get you know the he he knew that the Colts were going to try to get younger at some point um but yet still he came in and he was coaching these guys up underneath of them and the Colts organization the brass saw this you know and it stuck with them and that's I, I, I feel like that is the reason why he got hired to be an assistant DB's coach. So, you know, it, it does pay off, not just na- at the time, but if it's something that you're looking into doing later on, you know, that's kind of a, a feather in your bonnet, I guess, is, is the way to put it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, this this whole thing is all about, a, you know, forming relationships like you, mm-hmm. you don't ever want to cross any paths on a professional level to where you're, you've burnt a relationship or don't want to deal with. It's always a professional way of going about things. And if people follow Mike through his career, like you're talking about a passionate guy, like Mike played the game in a passionate way. He didn't have friends. He didn't he didn't play in a format to where he was worried about his opponent. Whatever team Mike was on, he was 100% committed and all in to doing whatever he had to do to help that team win, whether it was trying to get under the skin of an opponent, tight end, or wide receiver, a little late hit here or there. Like Mike brought it all to the table. So like just like I was complimenting Reggie on what he's going to bring to that room, just think about the attitude and the confidence that Mike is going to bring as a coach now, you know, to this room. Like, of course, he brought it as a player, but now being in a room to where he's 100% healthy and he ain't worried about his knee hurting or his shoulder hurting, he can fully just invest and be passionate with those guys. Like, it's going to be great. And um, and that's what the coaches are known for. I mean, they're known for just having great people within the organization. I mean, from the head man in charge to the the, the janitor, everybody's treated the same in that building. And that's where the respect comes from. That's why you get a lot of feedback from former players or people that's been through it or been here. Like you, you don't ever hear people having too many bad things to say. Uh, minus those couple years, Grixon uh, was running the ship. And I even think he's more apologetic now <laughs> and some of the things that he's done. But uh, Coach is known for, for, for being just, just having great people in the building, man. All right. I'm putting you on the spot again. Uh, just because of what you just said, it brings up a question. I, I remember I was going to ask you uh, back when you first got on here, and I never did. So you talk about the locker room and how important these guys are all the way from the head coach down to the janitor. Can you name me a person in your time with the Colts organization that was not a coach or a player, but just, you know, uh, someone that worked in the building or something where that person stood out to you and and, and made your time here better for you? Uh, Well, I can name the equipment guys like T and Frog. Those those were my guys, guys. Um, 
you know, the trainer staff with Aaron Burrell and all those guys, like those were my people, uh, love those guys. But outside of them, I remember Miss Stephanie um, and she's active on Twitter to this day, Miss Stephanie Paul. I forget what her exact title was when I was there. Uh, but she was one of the, like the first ladies that when the rookies came in, she was like that mother figure in the coach building that we, if we needed anything, or if our parents was worried about this or that, you know, Stephanie was going to make sure everybody felt comfortable and, and, and felt good. So Miss Stephanie Paul, uh, would be one for sure. And, uh, I don't think the chef that we had is still there. Um, uh, uh, I think there's a new chef, but. I haven't been inside the building in a few years. So I don't know who's still around, but I'm I'm pretty sure if I walk I walked inside just to to see some folks, I'll I'll see some of the same faces for sure. Oh, we got to get that taken care of, man. We got to get a hold of some guys out there in that organization and get oh, you up sure. there. Oh, DT, DT, my guy, I talk to D, DT all the time. It's just I haven't been. Like I said, we came back for the Chiefs game last year for Rob's. Uh, ring mm -hmm. thing, and I just got I just got to get back to the city more. That's all. Yeah, that's not the coach's fault. They're, they're <laughs> every week I get an email from the coach trying to get former players to come back or or whatnot. They do a great job of just you know keeping everybody updated with everything's going on and all that. So I've just been lazy as a as a retired. <laughs> I guess. Hey, you you earned your you earned your time to 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 live your life. So <laughs> all right. Um, Going into the uh, back to the wide receiver situation, um, obviously we we discussed it. I think Chris Ballard talked about it on um, an interview with Pat McAfee, uh, where you know having not had your quarterback set kind of delayed free agency when it came to the offense, especially you know wide receivers. Uh, because you're not going to be able to sign a wide receiver. No, no wide receiver is going to want to sign if you, you don't know who the heck's throwing you the football, right? Right. We we've had now a wide receiver, uh, the the quarterback for a week now, and um, you know, we talk about how they're all really really patient, right? At this point in free agency, these are the guys that are looking for the right fit the right money uh the, the just the right everything for them and you know everybody's naming off guys like julio jones as you talk about uh jarvis landry will fuller bringing back ty hilton uh guys like that but there are some wide receivers out there still quite a bit of decent ones, right? Uh, in, in, in my opinion, guys like D.D. Westbrook, um, guys like Adam Humphreys, you know, guys that I, I honestly believe could be a benefit to the team that aren't going to cost as much money. And, 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 and in all honesty, that seems more like a Chris Ballard move to me anyhow. Yeah, I, I, I think that it's a number of guys that might fit what the coach are trying to do and they they're just doing their due diligence i don't think that uh even though we got matt ron and uh the quarterback situation is fixed for the time being uh you still got you know a, a up and coming receiver that got some potential in michael pittman like you still got a couple pieces that you know that it's not like you're looking for this home run type type higher if that makes sense you know there's enough guys out here and I'm pretty sure they're being they're in communication with a number of guys and watching certain people to where if you know the dominoes start to affect you'll see guys start to pull the trigger a little faster it's just I think the like you said the the group of quality receivers that's still out there then you add the draft just makes that situation I guess better in a sense to where we don't have to rush into signing you know, whoever it is that, that everybody think that we should sign. Like you really got time to see who's out there. Who's who, like, what style receiver, like Matt Ron is used to having a, uh, uh, Adam Humphreys type, type of player in his system, far as somebody that can move the chains. He's always had what know whether that's a tight end or whether that's some slot that it was a safety net go to, to move the chains. And then he's always had the home run threat in Julio. 
Uh, so I think when you look at Matt Ryan and what he brings to the table, you know, one of those pieces, you know, that that we're thinking is going to be the Julio of, you know, uh, I guess in that mold is, is Michael Pittman as far as mm -hmm. the, a guy that can stretch the field, you know, take the top ball, make big time catches, mat mismatch problems, uh, things like that. I think we're looking more so as that one receiver that Matt Ryan can count on on every third down that he can get open and move the chains. And that's where it gets tricky. It's not like you're looking for, you know, a, a Julio in a sense. No, you're looking for just pieces that's going to be, you know, problems within this system that's going to always be a mismatch or or some type of mismatch type situation, whether it's, you know, the tight end having a guard, a linebacker, and it's a great receiving, catching type of tight end. And if you look at our roster, we're looking for a receiving type of tight end that's going to be a threat uh, in this system. And then, like I said, the, the slot. You know, and I think everything else will just take care of itself. Yeah, you know, when it comes to the tight end, that's that is one thing that uh, Jack Doyle retiring kind of you know hits in, in in a spot because he wasn't necessarily known as a great receiving tight end, but he was always that safety blanket that quarterbacks could rely on to find that open spot for a first down when when they needed it. You know, yep, and that's that's something that that uh, they're going to need to 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 find coming up and an another thing obviously i don't think we're done on the defense either um i really don't you know, we signed a, a cornerback uh from the raiders and obviously we traded the raiders for uh yannick but i feel like there's still at least one more piece on the defense that the colts could go out and get and solidify and make this defense a you know even more of a threat uh does it mean going and getting you know, Tyron or, or, or Gilly, uh, I don't know, you know, right. but, you know, again, one, one more scheme fit piece, in my opinion, is, is really what needs to happen. I think, uh, I think Gilly and James Bradbury are waiting on each other to sign to see which mm -hmm. is going to go where I think they're kind of the two top corners that they know are going to be difference makers on whatever team they sign. And they're just trying to see who's going to sign first. So the other one can get a dollar more than, than, <laughs> than the next. Uh, but if, if Stefan goes to the Raiders, like I know he took a visit and did all that. I like James, James Bradbury style of play fits the coach style of play as well. Uh, I like, I like that, but uh, I do think the, I don't think the coach are done on the defensive side of the ball at all. It's still some pieces to where we can get better at, even though we got some staples. Uh, it's a couple couple areas that's of, of importance that we need, and a corner, a top corner, uh, is one of them for sure. Maybe another pass rusher as well. Absolutely. Now, uh, that's something that I, I was thinking about. When you bring a guy in who is – a defensive guy right like john fox you bring in a john fox obviously he has a lot of history in the nfl he's been around a long long time but he probably knows some guys he probably has connections with guys when when the dc was hired he brought in guys he knew that he liked for the specific system. Do you think there's a situation where John Fox could do something very similar? Nah, and the reason why I say no is because it's not John Fox's defense. Now, if he was the defensive coordinator, yes. I just more so think, uh, like, if, if guys sign, it's going to be more of Gus type of guys, guys that you you can go back in his past and see the, the size or the speed or the style. And, and just know the type of guys that he's going to bring in as far as former players and players going forward. I think John Fox hire is literally just for his, his mind and what he brings to the table, not necessarily uh, like his former players. Because like I said, you know, at the end of the day, defense and assistants don't get fired. The DC gets fired. The OC gets fired. So, you know, you're not going to put, you know, too many eggs in an assistance basket you know, when it's not his job necessarily on the line. So it'll be more Gus players uh, getting signed. And I still think John is just in for his mind. Okay. All right. Um, is there anything else you want to discuss before we uh, finish this episode off? Man, that was, I think that was pretty, that was pretty cool. That was, that, that was good. 
I think so too. I think I think it was great, guys. We we are going to have a we're planning on a special guest this Wednesday. So I'm I'm not going to give the the name out and spoil it all, but I will say keep an eye out for the next upload for the next uh, Believe in Colts should be Wednesday, maybe Thursday, depending upon how much editing is done. But make sure you check that out. Don't forget. Um, share this out with with your favorite social media help get uh word out about this about the podcast because you know the best way of us getting exposure is through you guys so we appreciate you very very much i think that's going to do it for this episode of believe in colts brought to you by bet online and until next time i'm lawrence owen uh, that's gerard powers and as usual go colts